Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. So this is a very bizarre looking 12 lead. Let's go ahead and take a look at the expanded lead two on the bottom to see if we can identify this rhythm. Now because this is a 12 lead, remember this is 10 seconds of time. The method I use for cutting this into a six second strip to make the math easy when I'm calculating a rate is I'll take two of the sections, which are equal to two and a half seconds each, and then I'll add five large boxes to make our six second strip. With my six second strip, I'll go ahead and count my QRS complexes. I'm seeing three, so I would say that this is 30 BPM, very slow. Now at first glance, this rhythm may appear to be a second degree type two heart block because you're seeing P waves that don't have any QRS complexes associated with them. Now, this actually isn't a second degree type two. If you look closely here, we can follow the P to P interval and you'll see that it's actually a third degree heart block we can assume that there's a P wave buried in this QRS complex and another buried in the one before it. The one telltale sign though that makes this definitively a third degree heart block is the fact that P waves are moving. As you can see, the P wave is present here, right at the end of the T wave of this complex. If I move to the beginning of lead two, you'll see the P wave is in a different spot altogether. If this were a second degree type two heart block, the P wave location wouldn't change. Third degree heart blocks are known for having P waves that are superimposed in QRS complexes and in T waves. Let's now examine the other lead groupings. Because this third degree heart block is so slow and doesn't conduct that often, my anterior lead grouping is largely undiagnostic because all it is full of is P waves. Let's look at the inferior leads next. Here in my inferior leads, I am seeing some QRS complexes, but nothing is jumping out at me. This is still simply a third degree heart block. The lateral lead groupings are similarly inconclusive as V5 and V6 only contain P waves and one and AVL give me no additional information for diagnosis. For static cardiology purposes, I would identify this rhythm as a third degree heart block. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario. So we're dispatched to a private residence for an unknown medical complaint. The patient, who is 26 years old, denies any pain or shortness of breath, but has been reporting increasing fatigue throughout the day. Your crew attaches the monitor and obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure of 112 over 54, pulse of 28, 
respiration 17, SpO2 of 98 on room air, and a blood sugar of 98. The patient further denies any drug use or trauma. As the vast majority of your points in static cardiology are scored through correct treatment, we must first determine if the patient is stable or unstable, and then follow that ACLS algorithm. For unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. And this of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Now although this patient's pulse is 28, based on her other vital signs, particularly her blood pressure, and the fact that she's not altered in any way, nor is she complaining of shortness of breath or exhibiting hypoxia, my final diagnosis for static cardiology. would be a stable third degree heart block. We don't get to say that very often. Let's go ahead and now take a look at the treatment and let's see if you got that right. Just like with all other static cardiology cards, my treatment here is going to begin by reciting the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IVO2 monitor. Because this is a bradycardic rhythm, I'll then go ahead and consider giving atropine, one milligram IV push, but because this is a third degree heart block and atropine relies on the AV node to be functional, this would be largely ineffective. According to ACLS algorithm, my next choice of medication, because again this is a stable rhythm, will be a dopamine infusion, beginning at 5 all the way up till 20 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Additionally or alternatively, I could initiate an epinephrine infusion, hanging at 2 to 10 micrograms per minute. I could also add IV fluids, and then of course, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And don't forget, you can make your own custom playlists for you to practice with for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.